Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 2 of Europa Universalis 4 as the Mamluks. We are using the new Cradle of Civilization DLC and trying to work out what that is all about. Before I start, I'd like to once again say a very big thank you to my Patreon supporter, Bobby Fender, for sponsoring this video with his generous donation. It really does make a huge deal of difference, and especially at the moment when YouTube is still doing this annoying thing where they constantly keep demonetizing these videos because apparently they're not suitable for advertisers. In actual fact, they are. It's just YouTube's crappy algorithm that keeps deciding that they're not. They do eventually get released, but usually after they've missed most of their views. And uh, once a video has been incorrectly flagged, even after it's been released, it doesn't actually get promoted and served to your subscribers. So there's lots of issues going on with that. So every donation through my Patreon really, really is appreciated. Thank you very much. Also, uh, when I was playing on the last video and I was actually having a look at the army professionalism and I was trying to work out what this uh, May Refill Garrison, this uh, regimental mustering was all about and uh, I thought it was something to do with manpower and not actually sort of stopping to think about garrisons and uh, Foundation Afro came up with a very good suggestion, which I think is probably correct, which is that if you mothball a fort, there's probably an option to instantly refill the garrison, because when you mothball a fort, the garrison goes down to zero, so there's probably some sort of button that you can press to instantly refill them. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that if we get our army professionalism high enough, I assume we will. Now, I'm trying to remember what I was doing in the last video, even though it was only yesterday. Uh, oh, that's right. We were going to conquer Hamensen, which is this one down here. And we were recovering some manpower. So let's get you into position. We do want to go down here with at least one backup army because we do know that we are going to be fighting not just against these guys, but also fighting against um, Ethiopia, I believe. What have we got here? Radical reforms. Two of our most trusted advisors, and this is where I'm going to butcher some names, um, Gaith Kansur and Jafar Assad have been talking a lot recently. Plotting, some say. Drafting plans for Mamluk's future, others say. Whatever they're discussing, clearly controversial enough to warrant some secrecy. Finally, they approach Sultan Jamak to present the results. The thick stack of papers contains plans for monumental changes to the nation's trade practices, including increased protectionism, regulation, and industrial policy. Radical, some would say. Um, what does Jamak say about this? So, we can lose the stability for five mercantilism. We can lose our advisor and gain 200 admin we could lose our other advisor and gain 200 diplo or we could l see this this is this is basically converting money straight into um into points here i mean five mercantilism is really nice but there again we could get literally 400 monarch points for the cost of rehiring the, the advisors um if we were to take the hit on stability... I mean, 5 mercantilism is really good. It's really good. The thing is, there are lots of ways to earn... Well, I was going to say there are lots of ways to earn monarch points, but not as many ways to earn mercantilism, but you can artificially boost that up now. Um, what are the two guys? What do they actually give me? Uh, so we've got a trade efficiency guy, and we've got an inflation reduction guy. Well, we don't really have any inflation anyway. The trade efficiency is nice. Um, let's go ahead and, and get rid of both of them. And that gives us a, a, a huge boost there straight away. Um, stability cost modifier. That's fine. And we can afford to hire... Let's get the improved relation guy. So there we go. That, that gave us a nice little boost. That'll help us out towards getting our next techs. Now, I think we're just about in position to attack these guys. I'd like to go ahead and get this done as quickly as possible. Um, so you are in an alliance with Ethiopia, which is the blue nation down here. And you're also in an alliance with Enera, who are this little yellow blob down here that could potentially get to us, but I don't see it being a huge issue. Uh, I'm going to bring you down to there. I'm also going to bring you down because we just might need the backup numbers. I'm not terribly convinced that we will, but it's always worth doing that anyway. Let's just go ahead and um, are our ships safe? Yeah, because we're the other side of the uh, the Suez Canal, which obviously doesn't exist at the moment, but that is fine. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, declare our war over here. Ethiopia and Anera will both come in. That's fine. Uh, we don't need to call in any of our buddies. 
we will manage just just dandy. So let's go in. I'm not too sure how many troops have got nearby. I don't really want to split my troops up, especially as Ethiopia might have a big stack. So let's just move straight in with you. We also got to be careful that the Ottomans don't come and uh, try and jump in on us. Uh, we do have a fair bit more force limit, so we can certainly use that if need be. It's not really a big issue. Um, we could try and take the coastal province first, as we do have a little mini blockade of that. You are actually backing out, which as far as I'm concerned is good. You're actually going to hide in Ethiopia, so yep, you carry on and do that. Ah, there we go. There's a fairly big stack. So that's an Ethiopian stack. I'd probably like to get another general. I'm sure we can field one. Let's go ahead and get one more general. We can give the general a name. This one is going to be William Luke, one of my other um, sort of top patrons. So in you go, William. Oh, you're quite good, aren't you? Look at that. Four, four, uh, five shark. Five shock and two fire. Wow, you are really good. In fact, you should be leading this army. A two-star general already. Um, in fact, um, you were going to attack us there, and then you suddenly thought, eh, maybe not. Yeah, you're actually backing out now. Well, that's fine. We can siege these two provinces at once. That's that's a non-issue, really. Um, let's move you in there. We'll go and sit on the capital. It's it's worth having general... This, is, this was a, a consideration that you used to have to make in... Um, oh, you're actually coming off to attack, are you? This was a consideration that you used to have to make in EU4 when you weren't at war. Do you bother or not with generals? Because one problem that you used to have is if, if you if you hired a general when you didn't need them, there's a possibility they could die before they ever saw combat. But now that you can actually drill troops, there's a legitimate reason for actually have it, constantly having generals. Um, you are... well, I thought you were committed, but okay, let's get over there now. There's a 10 stack trying to come in there somewhere. I'm not too sure exactly where. You're going up here. So let's just go in and intercept you. We don't have a leader, but it was enough to get you to back off. So there's quite a lot of units trying to get through, actually. It certainly seems like there's more than um, three nations worth of units here, which is a little bit concerning. Might have to pull some of these units back to help out if they continue to come my way. We don't have enough leaders to take them all on. We will have to go and siege out some of Ethiopia as well. Okay, we've got this under control. Let's just bring you back, because you are our best general, and we would potentially like to deal with any possible armies. Right, oh, we're marching into there. You don't seem to be doing anything in particular. Maybe we can catch you over there. Can we have another leader? How many leaders can we have? Uh, military leaders can we have? We can have three. And we've got the points to do it. Let's make sure we've got another one. Let's go ahead and... Uh, oh, yes. Need to no another name. Where's my list? Um, Harden, you are going to be my next one. Because at least they're names that I can pronounce. So, Harden, in you go. Oh, you're not too great, are you? You're a 1-1-1. One, one, one. At least you've got some siege, I suppose. Uh, but you're going to get in there and grab that 6 stack, which is now a 10 stack. We have caught you. There we go. We've caught a, sort of caught them all off guard. So we'll win that battle. That one... Mm, this one might be tricky. But we are sort of keeping their armies busy. We're probably going to lose that one. Yeah, unfortunately we did. We do need some of these armies to sort of re... Uh, you know, get themselves back together. We don't actually have any of our forts on. Uh, it is going to be tricky for these guys to get around here because this, this desert kind of blocks movement. So we can sort of give chase. Um, meanwhile, this army is the one that's going to be doing most of the work. Ethiopia also has, barbar uh, has separatists, so that'll help. Um, this is quite a small stack, actually. I don't know why I'm chasing it around. So we might just go and... Are um, oh, you going to try and go that way around? Right? No, you're going to go that way. Fine. And you're going to get caught out by my ally there. That's fine. So let's start moving down here and just try and put the pressure on these guys. We're just going to sit up here. We're in the highlands anyway. Although they do have quite a few troops nearby. So I do want to make sure I've got some units in. Can we go ahead and raise war taxes? We probably should. 
The war's probably not going to be two years long, but we are losing money through the reinforcement. So let's go ahead and raise war taxes. Let's start to get these guys down here as well. We, well there's the War of the Roses firing. We need to kill off some of these armies to strengthen our own numbers. So let's get you down here as the backup. We are actually losing a lot of manpower as well. So, okay, there's another battle won. Oh, you've just attacked me with a rather big stat there that I wasn't expecting. Well, let's go and reinforce that one. You're about to get your army wiped out by the uh, Separatists. We turned up there just in time to save that one. No, hang on. Uh, gain some army tradition. Yes. Right, don't go that way because I don't want you attacking um, their rebels for them. I'd just like to get these guys out of the war, actually. Um, can we get... Right, okay. Can Will you guys peace out already? No. Ethiopia, will you guys peace out already? No. Why not? It's like your province is besieged and occupied, and you are losing your army. But you will not peace out. This doesn't make a lot of sense, really. I guess I could sneak in and, and take some of these uh, provinces that the rebels have already taken. And it is true, we don't have their capital. I mean, we could just march straight down to the capital and take that. That would certainly uh, help things out for us. I don't really want to take anything from Ethiopia at this point. I'm sure in the future I will do. All I want to do at the moment is sort of just get them out of the war. And they are willing to get out of the war. So, um, well, now that we're already sieging provinces, we might as... Do we want to try and get some... I was just thinking, do we want to try and get war reparations? But they're about to move a stack in there, and I haven't got the manpower to deal with this. So let's just go ahead and white piece Ethiopia out of this one. Uh, let's go ahead and get our guys back over here. Because we are currently black flagged. You are still in this war. You're actually willing to peace out. So let's get you out of there as well. Excellent. So now we've just got the, uh, the sort of the war goal people. Uh, what have we got here? Gain mercantilism? Yes, sure. <laughs> Never going to say no to free mercantilism. Right, let's get you back up towards Cairo. Because at some point we're going to have to deal with the Ottomans, really. Now, we're not spending any money at the moment. That's mainly because we don't have any manpower. But I really want to avoid hiring mercenaries with this new system. So, yes, I'm just about to get to you. Uh, let's go ahead and sue for peace. I might as well take all three of your provinces. This will give me some aggressive expansion. Not really enough to cause anything coalition-like. Um, you do have a bit of money, so we'll take that and send our demand. So that gives us a few more provinces. So what I really need to try and do is just outgrow the Ottomans at this point. So we'll keep one army down here because we do want to be able to um, put down any potential rebellions. And then we'll move some people back home, and we will do some army drilling. We have another mission. Why am I not getting messages when missions are completed anymore? Uh, I certainly don't seem to be. Uh, now I've got to try and find where this um, thing is. Is it in the menu? Message settings. Um, mission. Uh, to me, from me, interesting, others. Uh, all. Uh, when another country completes a mission. When we discover when our mission is successful. When we receive a new mission. Um, when we complete a mission. This message type is currently displayed as a pop-up. How come I haven't seen it on any occasion? This message type is currently displayed in a log. Well, according to this, it, it is displayed as a pop-up. Bear in mind what I am currently playing on is a, a preview press build, so there may be some issues. But I'm sure I did. Maybe it did pop up. Maybe I've just been dismissing them, but I just don't remember seeing it. Um, Vassalize Ramazan... Um, which one are you? You're not one of my current, um, you're not one of my current guys, are you? Ramazan is, uh, this one here. Um, interesting, especially as you are right next door to the Ottomans. Do you like me? You would actually take an alliance. 
Uh, would you accept vassalization? You actually would. Must have a military alliance. Must have a relation of at least 190. I mean, we could do it. We've got some improved relations there. There's a little bit of border fiction. Um, they are allied with the Ottomans. This is going to put us way over our diplomatic limit. But you know what? Let's let's go for it. Let's see if we can vassalize them. We really need to sort of boost things up here. So we've entered into a military alliance. We will get ourselves a royal marriage as soon as possible. Did I? I should have taken the mission first, shouldn't I? Because um, now I've stuffed that one up. Um, let's go for... Um, Improve our relations with Anizar. We can do that one easily enough. I always screw that one up. Uh, Anizar. Let's go ahead and you are these guys here. Let's go ahead and improve relations with you. Uh, so we're working on... You're only a single province. It's probably a little bit of a, a, bit of a waste, but we'll do what we can. Um, royal marriage. We have to wait until the 24th of December. There we go. Got a royal marriage with you now, up to 145. Um, Mamluk succession. Well, here we go. This is part of our sort of unique national thing. The death of Jamak has left our country without a ruler. All the important Mamluk households of al Kira are calling upon their influence to have a say in who the successor is going to be. Depending on new wins, our new, our new ruler will have the support of different households and different parts of the country. Only one thing is certain. Those... Those that would rather see their own group's interest prevailing will not greet our new sultan with joy. Some might even spend the rest of their lives trying to limit his influence. So, an average 48 claim of Egyptian heritage. Uh, an average 59 claim of Syrian heritage. Or gain 15 army tradition and we get someone with a strong claim. Sure. Sure. Can't beat that army tradition. And we've got a 453, which is fantastic. Uh, now we have the denouncement of sect practices, which would reduce national unrest by one, and it keeps our legalism high. So, sure, let's go ahead and take that. Now then, we want to try and improve relations here as much as we can. Why is that suddenly dropped down? Or is it, did we lose the royal marriage? Yeah, of course, we lost the royal marriage straight away, didn't we? Because we... Um, because our ruler died, literally just as we did the royal marriage. Probably had a heart attack. Um, move towards legalism. Uh, well, we might as well stay at legalism for the time being. Right, let's get that royal marriage again. Right, back up to 142. Now, we can send someone there to go and start improving relations. We probably should. Uh, were the caddies and judges of the land... Oh, were the caddies and judges of the land, the mustiffs are the ones to provide general legal interpretation and doctrine. A sultanate as large as ours, however, needs an overreaching authority of all muftis. Uh, traditionally, this is the role of the Sikh al-Islam. Uh, the Sikh al-Islam, not only the author of the fatwas himself, but also to, be, uh, also to be the one to appoint many of the regional muftis to our realm. Is ultimately, he's the person who will safeguard the legality of the Sultan's edicts. So, what have we got here, basically? Um, national tax modifier plus 10%. Tolerance of the true faith plus 0.5. Or yearly legitimacy. Well, tax modifier all the way. Without question. Um, 10 trade power in Aleppo. Yeah, we'll take the trade power. Another thing that I forgot to do as well, which I always forget to do, is go and see where my... Um, where my merchants are. So we're collecting here because this is our home node. So that makes sense. You're in Aleppo forcing trade this way. That makes sense. Uh, you are in Ethiopia forcing trade that way. That makes sense. Wow. The AI is actually, or Paradox, whoever sets these things, has actually put the merchants in the correct places. From what I can see anyway. Right. We need to try and get this guy sorted so we can potentially do something with him. So we want to go and improve relations. We can't really do that just yet because we've got to wait until the 1st of March. So let's send, send, send one guy to start improving relations as soon as possible. Uh, we're also trying to improve relations with um, Fadl. Fadl? Fadl? Because we actually want to um, vassalize these guys. Now, apparently we have one of their cores, or they have one of ours. 
Uh, improved relations is only at 76. So we might they're actually drilling there, which is quite cool. Uh, we might get it up to 190. We'll probably have to do something else if we want to really get them on board. But we'll start letting some things catch up. So we've got to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, that's what the Ottomans have wiped out uh, Byzantium already. So the Ottomans are going to start getting uh, getting strong. And we are going to have some issues. We will need to deal with them. Um, we've got a little bit of money. We could potentially get a building. We're still short of manpower. Only buildings we can really get a fort, so not all that useful. Um, we could get another nine units, which is, you know, tempting to do. And I really would like to build them up. But while we don't actually have any uh, manpower, it's a little bit point pointless. Um, the Ottomans have started to influence the nation of Ramazan. Well, that's fine. Can invite a scholar. There's a couple of different scholars that we could get. Um, this one. Cheaper admin tech cost. What are we currently getting? Plus one merchant. Mm, I think we'll keep the merchant, actually. Uh, we've got some conversions that we can't actually do. I'm, I'm assuming we can't have more than one, or can we? This actually implies that you can have more than one. Let's try it. Cost us 50 admin power, but yeah, yeah we can actually have... Uh, have more than one. Or well, that's not actually a scholar. I'm not too sure how this works, but yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's... Um, what's our important thing to do right now? I see all of our forts are back on again. I've obviously got the um, turn forts back on when you're at war uh, thingy enabled. So that's cost us a little... Probably a little bit more money than we needed to uh, to pay. But let's, uh, let's have those off for the time being. Uh, we could also probably do with some more ships. Uh, we can only get three more. Although let, let's let's go and get um, three lights because that'll actually help us with our protecting of the trade a little bit. Um, so yeah, mostly what we need to do now is to try and get some of these vassalizations um, or integrations done. This fleet has no commander. That uh, must mean that it's um, it's got ships being added to it. That's quite cool. Uh, but we're over the 20-minute mark, so I am going to have to end the video there. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are going to be enjoying this EU4 series. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun playing it. I, just, I quite like what this DLC has to offer so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Once again, a very big thank you to my Patreon supporter, Bobby Fender, for sponsoring this video with his generous donation. It really, really is appreciated. I will see you guys next time, and until then, goodbye for now.